These are the regular platonic solids. They are the tetrahedron with four faces, the cube with six faces, the octahedron with eight faces, the dodecahedron with 12 faces, and the icosahedron with 20 faces. My focus will be on the last one, the icosahedron. Icos is from the Greek meaning 20 and hedron meaning faces. I'm interested in a two new or two frequency icosahedron based geodesic dome. You can make two frequency icosahedron by simply dividing each triangular face from midpoint to midpoint of the edges. This produces a solid with 80 faces if you're counting the whole sphere, but it is not geodesic. All of the edges would be the same length and there would be four triangles in each of the 20 planes. I have divided one face of the icosahedron shown as an example. You might be able to see that all the vertices of the original icosahedron are on the sphere, but the vertices of the triangles formed by the division are not. In order to become geodesic, you have to push all the vertices out to the circumscribing sphere that the original icosahedron defines. You may be able to tell by close inspection that this dome structure has all the vertices pushed out to the sphere. The blue triangles are the originals from the icosahedron. The yellow triangle was made as mentioned by dividing the blue one and then the vertices of the yellow triangle were pushed out to the sphere. This puts each triangle on its own plane and changes the length of the edges. Because I'm only interested in half of the sphere, I will end up with 40 faces, 65 edges, and 26 vertices. Generally in dome construction, the edges are referred to as struts. There will be two sizes of struts, which I will refer to as long and short. Two frequency domes and any even frequency dome have a nice flat equator that will sit on level ground. I chose two frequency for simplicity and to keep the parts count down to a reasonable number. I built models out of toothpicks and matchsticks and one out of cardstock just to get acquainted with the shapes and construction. If you're dying to get your hands on something real as opposed to a model or a drawing, then you need to know the length of the struts you will use and how you plan on connecting them at a vertex. You can skip ahead to the appendix at the end to see how I calculated the strut lengths or just use the chord factors from the table. Just decide what radius you would like your dome to be and then multiply that by the short strut chord factor to get the length of a short strut and by the long strut chord factor to get the length of a long strut. Figure out how much space your hubs or other method of connection will take up and you're ready to go. There are many ways to do the actual construction, top down or bottom up, or build pentagons and then attach them to each other. Here's a quick representation of going from the ground up.